hello hello oh no i don't know if i can wear my glasses um <laughs> hi everyone um we are just getting started hope everyone's doing well today um oh that was a loud sound from my computer um let me see if we can't get when sorry about that um hello hello hi everyone let me just do one thing happy thursday um is my wi-fi working by the way um let me know if i'm cutting out at all just got a notification that it might be something might be wrong but um anyways let me just see if i can't get wendy to join oh perfect okay she's here let's do this awesome okay well um hope you all are doing well today we're going to be talking all about um recent developments hello wendy Hi. how are you i'm great how are you i have a i kind of have a special surprise <gasps> oh wait what is it let me see okay hold on one second <laughs> hold on let me see wait can i, I turn okay hold on Say hi, everybody. Hi. Oh my oh my God. Hello, hello. Yay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> All the crypto knights are here. No way. Oh, that's amazing. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. Are you all getting together doing a, a little yeah, crypto so night? Crypto night. Yeah, so I'm in Orlando right now. We're going to do some team building and all kinds of fun stuff. So nice. I'm excited Very to nice. hang, out, hang out and talk. And that's I'm awesome. in a room. My, my room is a mess, so you'll have to. You'll have to excuse me, but <laughs> okay. I did, you know, oh, I yeah. to be able to, you know, get the squad together. That's awesome. To vibe with everybody. So how are you? How totally. was your holiday? Holiday was great. Um, you know, it's been definitely I'm back in Los Angeles right now. Um, it's a little rainy today, Yay! which is unlike LA, but um, you know Is it really? Oh my goodness. It is. Yeah, you you got out at the right time <laughs> because oh, no one in LA no one can drive in Los Angeles. It's just in the rain, at least. They can't. They literally cannot drive. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why, but they can't drive. So <laughs> who knows? Yes. But who knows? I'm like, I'm well, happy that yeah. um, that I'm that I'm here. Okay, I'm looking. Did okay. I just need to see if I needed to retweet anything. I'm looking right now. I'm so unprofessional. All good. Oh, don't worry. We can we can get into it whenever you're ready. Um, yeah, just lots. Of, no, let's lots we, of let's do it. Let's do it. Um, yeah, I guess, right. you know, obviously. Um, so hello, everyone. Today, we are chatting with Wendy, Crypto Wendy. Oh, go give her a follow. Make sure you're following Coindesk. Any point during the live, make sure you're sending likes. Um, really will help get up to the For You pages. We want lots of people to see what we're talking about. Um, lots to chat about today, especially because the past week, um, the past couple weeks, actually, I remember um, Lucas and I were talking a little bit about this. Um, you know, a lot of uh, dips we've seen across, you know, the crypto market. So there's a lot to talk about, you know, are you, are we bullish? Are we bearish? You know, what's, what's happening? Um, but yeah, I guess just to start off. Um, so when Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency falls, what are your thoughts and what are your first moves? Okay, so I've been doing a lot more breakout trading now. And one of the reasons why is because we are still in a bull market. I know there's a lot of people that are like, we're not in a bull market. Shout out to Make B, shout out to Make ZK. But a lot of people are saying that we are in a bear market. I don't believe we're in a bear market. If we were in a bear market, I would need to see probably like 39K broken first. And then once that happens, I would kind of reanalyze. And then I would also really want to see like 29K broken. And I know a lot of people are like, you're probably insane for that. But at the same time, it's a very crucial area of support so when bitcoin tanks generally we see altcoins tank so and i'm leaning more towards a breakout breakout strategy breakout trading strategy and the reason why is because when i see bitcoin do something that i want it to do then i can go ahead and feel comfortable getting into an altcoin position like earlier mm -hmm. today we saw dogecoin pop we saw shiba inu popped and shout out to crypto by the man for calling shiba inu or not shiba inu but dogecoin because he we, we did we streamed last week and he was talking about it, that it was going to pop. And sure enough that it did because it started to break out a little bit. But I needed to see there. I needed to see that actual sustain. Um, mm -hmm. So one of the things that I'm advising my audience, well, not necessarily advising them, but just talking to them about is being mm -hmm. very, very aggressive at taking pro profits. And one of the reasons why is we saw, I believe we saw Bitcoin hit like 44.6 today. And then we went ahead and um, 
and then we went ahead and like kind of dropped a little bit and then we saw all coins kind of you know have a bit of a dip so i'm looking for more breakout strategies and i'm also advising people to consider taking a lot of profit when they're when they're up because you don't want to be up 20 percent and then forget to take profit hold and then the project tank and then you're down 80 percent. so that's just my personal totally. opinion on that totally and just to clarify for everyone that's watching can you define this breakout strategy you were talking about or exactly what that is what that looks like yeah, so basically what that looks like is I'm going to I go ahead and I use very important areas of support and resistance. And with those areas of support and resistance, I want to see if we're able to flip into flip resistance into support. Generally, resistance is an area that kind of can indicate a top. And once we're able to flip that into support and when support means that it's kind of like the local bottom area or it's an area that it shouldn't be broken down any further, um, that will indicate a bullish movement for me. However, the vice versa can happen when we get bearish and we break down support and we turn it into resistance. So that's something that can kind of, that can kind of occur and, and trade invest simplify. You can go ahead and move people, remove people that are being yucky in the comments. Cause we don't want any of that. We just want positivity. No. Um, yes. And whatnot. <laughs> but, but basically I look for like Bitcoin has been in a downtrend. I'm sorry. I don't have my charts with me right now, but we're in a downtrend no and there's a trend no line that we're able to kind of like flip break, break that area of resistance, create support, and then have it kind of climb up that way. So I'm looking for something like that. But at the same time, I'm looking for a lot more of, you know, shorter term trades with altcoins. And that's just my personal opinion. I'm being cautious, but people can do whatever they want to do. And shout out to the XRP community. We love and support you. And I hope that you guys win the lawsuit with the SEC. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, just, I know you touched on this a little bit. By the way, shout out to Jack for all the likes. Thank you. Keep the likes coming. Make sure you are following Wendy. Make sure you're following Coindesk. And let's keep it going. Um, so I guess you touched on this a little bit already, but are you bullish or bearish on crypto markets right now? I am bullish long term. We're seeing a little bit of bearish price action right now, which is okay. It happens. Um, but again, we do have a lot of work to do before I can start to be a little bit more bullish bullish and yes I haven't been live on TikTok for a minute I've been a little bit busy my daughter's been home from school and <laughs> she always always comes for a shout out to Portugal up in here um but I'm bullish long term I still think we're in a bull market we are going to experience some you know a little bit of bearish price action but I'm still very confident that we're in a bull market um but at the same time I want to see people actively taking profits and I want to see people not dumping in a lot like large amounts to some of these low cap altcoins because it's just not safe to do so if you're you're brand new to crypto and you're not really confident um and you and you're not really sure what direction price is going to go maybe consider dumping in a lot less than that and like kind of diversifying and take profits mm -hmm. very very fast totally totally so yeah and then just to go back to that um bullish versus bearish we just gotta quickly define those terms make sure everyone is on the same page about what that means okay so bullish is when the market is going up and people are buying 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 that is essentially pushing price up Shout out to the Netherlands. Also, too, I've got a big bag of Victoria VR. I'm trying to do trying to do everything. Bearish is when price is going downward and people are selling, 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 selling. Um, so bullish means and actually came came from a term from the stock market and because bulls kind of push upward and bears kind of paw downward. So that's where it comes from, which mm. is a little bit silly. Um, <laughs> but yeah, shout out to Tennessee. Nice. Awesome. Let me see if I get any questions. If you want to, uh, by the way, any questions you get at any point, feel free. We can just go for it. I know if people have questions, ask them because um, we have, we're going to be talking about lots and some stuff might be confusing. So if there's anything you want to get clarified, here we are. Um, yeah. So I guess you talked a little bit about those indicators, you know, support versus resistance. And we don't have to get into a whole TA conversation right now, but um, yeah, I guess when you're looking if the market is bullish or bearish, um, is it just that? What else were, it, is a part of your, um, you know, decision to kind of make that call? So one of the things that I'm doing a lot of is I'm investing in a lot of metaverse and play to earn projects. And one of the reasons why is nothing is market resistant. So if the market is very, very bearish, obviously we're going to see a lot of downtrends. People are going to lose a lot of money. And when the market is bullish, people are going to do pretty, pretty well. But one of the things that I think will kind of 
kind of counter with a bear market is metaverse play to earn projects. So I'm doing a lot of those pre-sales. I'm entering into a lot of that type of stuff. So the, I feel like those are important things to kind of pay attention to right now. You want to look for projects. Shout out to North Hollywood. We love Hollywood over here, LA. Baby. Yes, we do. Um, Woo. <laughs> but we want to pay attention to projects that are going, that could potentially do well. But at the same time, we want to, you know, take profit very aggressively and we want to make sure that we're hedged properly. That's just my personal opinion. Y'all can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's an interesting point about looking into those projects that, you know, aren't necessarily just altcoins or Bitcoin, you know, whether it's metaverse or play to earn, all of those are super big right now. Um, and we're probably just going to keep see keep seeing new things from that, especially as we're coming into the new year. Um, yeah, cool. I guess, yeah. How do you position yourself then when um, during bullish or bearish times, um, do you hedge against the market with derivatives or do you... you set tight stop losses i guess um always you know. yeah i'm a, yeah. when i'm when i'm in it so i do a lot of different type of investing so i do some short-term trades and i have a stop loss i have a stop loss so i make sure that if i'm if i'm interested in going long or if i'm anticipating price to go up and price doesn't do what i want it to do i have an area where i want to go ahead and cut that position because i don't want to hold it until it drops like 80 percent. so it, depending on what type of project it is or depending the type of trade i will have a stop loss um, one of the things i do regardless is a bull market Market or a bear market, I like to take profit very, very aggressively. For example, there's a project that has done very, very well. And I believe it's trading at 30 cents now. Well, I sold, I took a moon bag at 10 cents. And I have some people that are like, Wendy, you're crazy. That doesn't make any sense. Well, guess what? It made sense for me because I've removed all of my risk. And it mm-hmm. feels kind of good. So it kind of depends what it is that I'm trading. Um, sometimes I use leverage, but if I'm going to use leverage, leverage is not for people that are brand new to the space. It's for folks that understand that you can literally you lose everything. And um, I will do very like two to three times leverage. So I do different types of trading and investing. Some stuff is long term, some term is short, some stuff is short term. But one of the tactics that I also like to use and we talk about a lot is when we're taking profit, we take profit in stable coins, we use centralized platforms like FTX US. Um, mm-hmm celsius crypto.com whatever you know platform that you're comfortable with using um then then i will go ahead and do so um and mm-hmm. earn that passive income sorry guys i'm reading the chat too so my mind is like <laughs> yes no i'm getting getting lots in the chat now it looks like people are learning um got some good comments um you know using the terms yes bullish bearish see some bears in the chat very nice um yeah and also too i also too i want to explain what a moon bag is because i'm getting i don't have yes. any predictions for xrp as far as price goes i do hope that they plan to settle this year or win the case against the sec i don't necessarily think that they're going to win the case against the sec not because i don't like xrp but because the sec is and they're going to do what they want to do anyways. So that's just my personal opinion. Um, also, to a moon bag is when you're up in profit and you've removed your initial investment and some profit. Um, with moon bags, it's, it can be a little bit harder to make in markets and in price action like this because right now we're not experiencing a lot of like crazy like two, three, five, ten times. Um, but generally, if you're up like two to three times on your position, you want to sh- you want to um, go maybe consider consider selling half on a double or half on a triple or half on whatever. Um, but you should always have a bullish and bearish trading or investing plan, mm-hmm. an area where you want to go ahead and cut your position. It is better to cut your position when you're 10% down than when you are 40% down or 80% down. So that's something you totally. have to do personally. That's your business. That's not my business. But I think that that's a good thing to do nice awesome um yeah and if there's any more any questions you guys have um are moon bag or moon bags the best type of bag Hmm. i think that (laughs) um the thing the thing with the moon bag is it's a project that um that you've already taken your original investment out and you've taken some profit and basically you're removing all risk you're removing you're removing your risk you're removing emotion so that's the reason why i like moon bags so so much um because you're it's something that you've already profited on you're just kind of holding to see if it ends up going up and the bit shout out to crypto tea but the good thing about it is is that let's say that you have a moon bag of project x and you've removed your initial you move your profit and you did this at when it went two times well guess what if it ends up pumping 10 times, you can continue to take more profit out and more profit then. So that's why we like moon bags. And moon bags can be anything. It can be whether you hold one coin or a thousand coins, a million coins, whatever it is. It really, really just depends on you and your risk. Totally. That's awesome. I guess kind of transitioning, you know, if we're talking about altcoins and whatnot. Um, what do you think are the top three altcoins to watch out for in 2022? Okay. 
Well, I'm seeing a lot of love for Theta up in the chat, and we love Theta. Theta is an absolutely amazing project, and one of the great things I like about Theta is they allowed me to do it via Theta Labs. We were able to raise about $7,000 for one of my favorite nonprofits in Southern California, and I think that that's absolutely amazing. So we love Theta. They actually have a working product with their Theta, the Theta, their, uh, I forget what it's called. I forget what it's called, but you can li actually live stream. It's very, very similar to, um, to Twitch, which is awesome. I like a lot of Metaverse projects. Um, I'm doing my best to answer all your questions. I got a lot in here. I've been in crypto since end of 2017. I've been in crypto since end of Long 2017. Time. And that's when Long I bought time. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Um, some other projects I like, I really, really love Gala. That's not financial advice. Um, but I really love the ecosystem. I did a video talking about how I bought a Gala Tavern. And I bought a avatar so I can go ahead and hang out in the metaverse. And then I also really like, what else do I like? I do like the Solana ecosystem. I do think that people should pay attention to different ecosystems. There's a really cool tab on CoinGecko where um, it shows you different ecosystems. I don't have it in front of me, so I can't tell you exactly how to do it. Um, mm -hmm. But basically, you can go ahead and view all the different ecosystems like Solana, Ethereum, Cosmos. But I really yes. do think the Cosmos ecosystem will pop. I'm seeing it being shielded very, very heavily. So I'd kind of pay attention to that. Thanks. Very nice. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely important to, you know, check all that out. Do your own research, especially when you're looking at the coins that you want. So you take away anything yeah, from this. <laughs> make sure yes um cool i guess um another one um i would say is you know can we kind of segue you know we're talking about you know when you're taking profits or you have losses or you know altcoins bitcoin all that um crypto and taxes is something that's definitely um you know something to think about especially when you know you're making these purchases doing these transactions so i guess what's the best way to keep up with that um especially you know when you're doing all these different types of trades okay so this is i have a legal section on my youtube channel and i've interviewed quite a few different crypto tax attorneys um and we talk heavily about like some of the, we answer some of the basic questions i don't i'm just asking the questions they do first off you do not want to take advice for anybody who is not um who is not licensed and certified ever you never want to do that you want to make sure you're talking to a licensed professional because you don't want to get incorrect information um also too when you are looking at there's a lot of different talk tax soc, tax software out there um i do use Zen Ledger, and one of the reasons why I use Zen Ledger is because my attorney CPA likes to um, likes to use it. So I do. Again, you can use whatever tax software you want. That's a hundred percent up to you. But that's the one I use. It's on my website, and I also use Andrew Gordon. He is my crypto CPA. He's one of the best in the game. Um, his offices are a little pricey. Um, so if you're doing you know a lot of volume and you've got a lot of capital, I highly recommend you take you you call him and get a consultation. But there's some other really great folks out there too. Um, that's just my opinion. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. That's the, all that software is great, especially, um, you know, when keeping track of all of that, making sure and yeah, you know, and also make sure you're following Wendy, make sure you're checking out Wendy's YouTube channel, make sure you're following Coindesk. Um, keep keep the comments coming. Because um, yeah, we got lots, lots more to get into. Um, do you have any questions in your chat, by the way? I think we can Maybe yeah, people are talking. Point. People are talking a lot about Theta, and I really love Theta. Theta is a great project. Again, they one of the cool things that I like about Theta is they have the working platform, which is amazing. And we like to, one of the good things about or one of the things in crypto is to look to projects that actually have working things. Like if somebody mentions like, hey, I you know look at this. There's an actively working play to earn project. Maybe take a look at it or play to earn metaverse project. Take a look at it. Like if it's working, mm -hmm. that's a good sign. Um, Crow is an amazing project. Absolutely amazing. And I know about quantum computing threats. So let's talk a little bit about quantum computing threats. Again, I'm not a super savvy um, tech person, um, but I have a friend who was one of the early Bitcoin miners. And we kind of talked about, I talked about quantum computing threats with him. And he said the amount of energy and time it would take to do that on Bitcoin's network, it is possible to happen. But at the same time, it's not something that's super, super likely to happen. Yes, it is a threat. There's threats with everything. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's not necessarily likely to happen. As far as Polygon goes, Matic goes. We love Matic. We love Polygon. I have a fat moon bag of that. And one of the reasons why we like it, it's a layer two scaling solution for Ethereum because Ethereum is barely usable at this point. <laughs> I mean, there's a good thing. There's plenty of plenty of solutions in the meantime before the upgrade. So let's hope that um, we can we can make it. But um, yeah, I guess, you know, you're talking about these different um, types of cryptocurrencies. Uh, why do 
cryptocurrencies tend to take a beating like when bitcoin falls i guess you know if we're talking about altcoins talking about other you know ethereum tokens just did a piece by the way go check it out on erc20 tokens um all the different ethereum uh linked projects out there so yeah i guess why um do others tend to fall when bitcoin does well if we look at bitcoin dominance bitcoin does dominate the market very 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 heavily and any time i do have a small bag of everest id and i do have a small bag of v chain anyways um um did you do persistence one i'm not 100 percent sure right now um but when bitcoin dumps generally the market tanks as well and that's just kind of what that's kind of v chain is not a pumping up you guys it's actually a pretty good project that's been around for a long time um, I don't want to talk a lot about Web3. I want to talk about all this other stuff, guys. Um, <laughs> this one's actually a good question. Hold on. Let's answer this. I am an options trader and looking to get into crypto. How would you recommend getting started? So yeah, I think if you are an options trader, I, I don't know where you're located. It, that kind of depends. So you have to kind of navigate the system with that. Um, but FTX is actually a really great place. It has a lot of traditional financial crypto, crypto product, um, products over there that you can go ahead and trade with. Um, and maybe if you're not able to trade there due to their um, restrictions, maybe consider checking out KuCoin. I heard a lot of people um, like that. Um, but if you're an options trader, that's what I would highly recommend. I want to say that FTX has those types of products. I'm not a really, really big options trader. I feel like it's a little bit risky for me, but at the same time, um, you can go ahead and check those options out. Awesome. Let me see if we get any, any more questions. Um, which crypto trading company charges less fees and is reputable? Reputable. <laughs> wow, I totally okay. said that wrong. <laughs> so it kind of, all, the exchanges charge different stuff. Me personally, I can, shout out to King Zillion. Um, but um, I kind of just use whatever's convenient for me at this point because I'm so busy doing all of these things and being a mom. Um, I just kind of use what's convenient for me. I know that's not really great like a great answer but like sometimes i'll i have i have a separate phone that i use for trading if i want to and it's completely not linked to anything i have a separate um i also have a separate trading laptop as well um so i will use kind of whatever's convenient for me i really don't like to pay attention to the fees and whatnot because you know when you when you do that and this might not be the best advice but i'm just going to be honest with you guys um when you do that you're going to restrict yourself to specific platforms and on those platforms you might not have access to some of the cryptos that you want to get into so my best piece of advice for you fees suck but at the same time it's kind of part of the game so one of the things that i would consider is signing up for different crypto exchanges at least have a different email address have a different password practice very very good opsec but the reason why you want to go ahead and do that is so you have options to trade whatever it is you want to do because if you're concerned about fees i get that because it is an important cost into your profit and your losses mm -hmm. but at the same time if you're concerned about fees you might be missing out opportunities to get in some really really low cap gems so it's kind of up to you however you want to play that there is always risk associated with it but at the same time i would like to i think you should keep an open mind and just do your own research and um keep using mm -hmm. different platforms and just yeah, practice good offsets totally and i guess a follow-up question to that um would you say it's a better strategy to have um, one different, like the same digital asset, but in different accounts on different exchanges, or maybe just kind of, um, I don't know, compartmentalizing across different ones. You know, you have one for your Bitcoin, one for Ethereum, one for your DeFi tokens. Um, you can do that, but just, but just understand anytime you're using a centralized exchange, not your keys, not your coins. And if you're using MetaMask without a ledger, really kind of not your keys, not your coins. You're more susceptible to hacks and different things like that. So I think it's good to use different exchanges for different things, but at the same time, you have to understand you do not own those coins. So just be very, very careful, understand how this works. And anytime you leave something on an exchange, it's your, your, even though like if the exchange runs or gets hacked or something, you're kind of responsible for that. Totally. Yeah, I know that security has been a big part of what we've been talking about on uh, Coindesk, especially in the last live stream that we did talking about NFTs and holiday gifts. You know, that's a big part of crypto. So uh, make sure you're following Wendy. Make sure you're following Coindesk. Give us some likes. You know, if you want to send any little gifts, by the way, totally feel free. I love to see some glasses go across my face. But um, yeah, um, I guess if there's any, let me see. I think I got maybe a couple more questions, but um, in the chat. Um, yeah, I guess there's one thing that I thought was interesting, and this isn't a comment on this live stream. This happened the other day um, when talking about 
Bitcoin and the death cross, um, where, by the way, just to clarify the death cross for everyone who's watching, that is where the 50 day moving average drops below the 200 day moving average. So um, it creates this um, cross in the market. It's called the death cross. And typically it's a bearish indicator. Um, but someone commented the death cross is bullish for Bitcoin. Um, so what do you think about this? OK, well, first off, shout out to Trade Invest Simplify. Wendy, queso or melted cheese on nachos? Both. <laughs> Two different types of cheese. Okay, Perfect. so the death cross is a lagging indicator, and it's almost kind of like a meme because cryptocurrency moves a lot faster than traditional markets. But at the same time, death crosses are very, very, they can be powerful indicators. They are valid. But I would, well, I highly recommend to kind of go back in history and see how many times we've had death crosses and when it actually indicated a bear market. I feel like it more, more indicates like bear, like a bearish, um, a bearish period. Um, on that. And then also, too, you can spot the death crosses on different pat or different time frames. So it kind of really depends what time frame you're looking looking at and different things like that. A death cross is not the end all be all to me, in my personal opinion. So I wouldn't mm -hmm. use that as my end all be all. I would use a lot of other factors um, with the market. But it's kind of, it, I don't want to say it's a meme because it still is valid. Um, one of the things I like to use is like when I see the EMAs running upward, mm -hmm. stack really well. I like to use EMA 9. 21, 30, 50, 100, 200, when they're all running upward like that, that's super, super bullish for me. When they're pointed downward and we have the EMA stacked in a negative manner, 200, 150, mm -hmm. 30, 21, 9, that is like kind of a bearish pattern. And generally when price is trading above the EMA 200, it's bearish. When we're below the EMA 200, it's or excuse me, when we're above the EMA 200, it's bullish. When we're below the EMA 200, it is bearish. And you can even use just other EMAs, like any any length that you want that you feel comfortable with. Do whatever works for you. Totally. Um, and I guess, yeah, to, I guess we talked a little bit about software as using before, but that was more for taxes. I guess, what softwares do you use to kind of track all of this? Um, and where are you looking um, for your data? Um, to, for indicators, to, or are you talking about to like track my portfolio? Oh, for indicators, I guess. Um, what plot, like, what are you using in order to be able to, I guess, get all of this information? Okay, so there's, first off, Investopedia is 100% free. It's one of my favorite resources if you want to learn about sure. cryptocurrency or you want to learn about traditional assets or traditional financial terms. Go to Investopedia, 100% free. It's something that I recommend. I try to always recommend free services to you guys. Um, so there's that. Um, and one of the two platforms that I like to use to trade on, I like to use TradingView. They went ahead and gifted me a free, um, a free premium membership because I hosted a giveaway for them. So shout out to TradingView. Nice. Um, but you can add on a bunch of indicators and stuff there. They have a free mm -hmm. option and then they have a paid option. The free mm -hmm. option is great, but you can only use a couple indicators and they do save all your settings. However, CoinTrader Pro is 100% free and you can add on almost whatever indicators you want. It doesn't have mm -hmm. the specialized scripts like TradingView does because um, there are some paid indicators on TradingView like Market Cypher. It's one that I use. They're one of my partners for my, for my YouTube show. Great, great friends of mine. Absolutely love them. Um, but um, you can use CoinTrader Pro or you can use TradingView. And then there's some... Um, Yes. Oh, you cannot hire me for any advice. I don't do that type of stuff. I just kind of make content. If you have questions, I'd love to answer it for you and do the best that I can. But I don't. I don't yes, feel comfortable taking questions. I don't feel comfortable <laughs> taking compensation for that stuff. Um, but there's like Dex tools, and then uh, there's PooCoin to chart different cryptocurrencies, stuff like that. So, um, there, those are those options as well. Nice. Um, so we only have about a minute left, but I guess just to wrap up, kind of last question. Um, what, what, I guess, what do you want to tell everyone slash, what do you tell your followers when Bitcoin falls or there's concern about dipping crypto prices and almost, you know, kind of a panic? Ah, what do I do? I there's want never, this. there is never any reason to panic. If you're panicking, that means you have too much invested. That means you haven't been practicing your due diligence. You haven't been taking profit. You haven't been hedging. You don't have a bullish or bearish plan. Um, so if you're panicking, then you need to do better. I'm going to be straight up, straight up honest with you. You need to do better. You need to not invest as much, maybe just dollar cost average into Bitcoin or hold or dollar cost average into stable. Yes. Cost. I don't care. DCA, but, check out the latest DCA video we did. Yeah. Um, but explaining but all honestly, that. like if you're, if you're having a meltdown, if you're freaking out about prices, then you are over invested. So do not, I highly recommend to not do that. And um, we talk about taking profit consistently. If you're up 20%, 
take some off the table. If you're up 50%, take some off the table. If you're up 5%, maybe take some off the table if the market's feeling a little bit bearish. You're not always going to win all the time. I lose a lot. It's part of the game. But at the same time, you need to learn to create a bullish trading plan and a bearish trading plan. And the or bullish trading and investing plan and bearish trading and investing plan. And the reason why we do that is we want to, you want to go ahead and indicate what your hopes, your dreams are, um, what you, what you want to get out of this. And you also want to indicate what, um, and have, and do this with intent is tell a talk about to yourself or your family, whatever it is, when you want to cut your losses, because you don't want to sell mm -hmm. at 80% down. You don't want to sell at 90% down. Maybe take a 10% loss, uh, take a step out of the market and kind of reevaluate. Yeah. So it's, if you're, if you're freaking out about the market, you're, you've invested way, way too much. That's a very good point. And that's something I think people need to remember, especially, you know, make sure doing your own research and having a plan super important um all right i think that's all we have time for but wendy thank you so much pleasure such a pleasure as always um hope you have fun tell all the other crypto nights um i say hello I and i um, excited to keep doing these um yeah awesome and love you guys so much cool. sending you all love and light um one of the things i want to tell you before we go um please do something kind for somebody else today whether it's smiling holding a door open for somebody calling your mom i don't care what it is do something nice um it's the world is a really crazy place right now there's a lot of real really negative stuff going on so just try to be of service to somebody if you can um but i'm sending you all love and light i'm gonna go okay bye awesome bye